Mm. Hi, welcome to lesson four, video tutorial on XB Basics. In this video, I'm going to show you how to take analog data and read that from a remote XB and sensor. We're starting to get a little bit more sophisticated with some of the knowledge we have, and because of that, I don't want to go over every little thing that I'm going to do in this video. If something doesn't make sense to you, go back to one of the previous lessons and watch those again, and then hopefully when you come back to this video, you'll have an understanding of what's going on. So let's get into it. As always, let's start with a diagram. We've got XB number one is going to be the coordinator, and that's going to connect straight into the Arduino. <clears throat> XB number two is going to be the router. And we're going to use a temperature sensor. I'm going to use the MCP9700. It has three pins, one for ground, one for five volts, and one to sense the data. <clears throat> so, we're going to set pin three to be an analog reading pin, and we'll have that take an analog sample every five seconds, and then wirelessly transmit that to the coordinator, which is then going to come into the Arduino, and we'll monitor the terminal of the Arduino to see what temperature it is at this XB. So I've hooked up what I am going to call the coordinator into onto the computer and I loaded up XCTU and I want to make sure this is a coordinator since I'm calling it a coordinator and the coordinator has to be set for API. So if this function set isn't set, go ahead and set that on yours. Uh, we'll make the pan ID 885. Make sure all the devices in this network are the same PAN ID 885. And that's all I need to write to. Okay, now that that's complete, I'm going to get the other one connected. This is going to be the router. So I'm gonna read the values here, see what this is. So well, already we see this is a router and it's set to AT mode. That's what we want. If yours is not at this, let's make it that. We've got to set the PAN ID to be the same as what we indicated in the last one. I like to set join verification on. Um, the DH and DL we're going to leave as zero because it's only going to talk to the coordinator. That's fine. And then we're going to go down into the IO settings. And we're going to use D3 is what I wrote in the diagram, so we'll just keep on with D3. And this we're going to set to ADC, which means analog input. Now we need to go down into the I.O. sampling, and we're going to do the sample rate. I want to set this to 5 seconds, so that would be 5,000 milliseconds. Um, but actually it only takes a hex value, so hex for 5,000 is 1388. So I'm setting that to 1388, and that's all I need to do on the router side. So I'm writing the configuration there and that's done. Okay, let's put this together. Inside the kit here, I soldered this red wire into AD3, which is pin, um, well, D3, our analog pin that we set. So we need to tap off that pin and we'll remember the red wire is for that. I'll pop the chip in here and place this into our breadboard. There we go. Now AD3, I'm just gonna put into a random hole here and tell you about this guy. This is an MCP9700. It's a little little temperature sensor. Real small, pretty cheap, and reads the temperature. So I'm gonna put that, the middle pin is where I would need to connect it to the, did, to the analog readout. So that middle pin is there. And let me just connect this to ground and connect this little sensor to five volts. So now on to the next thing, we'll, we'll connect the XB. Um, five volts, stay in there. Five volts goes to five volts, and ground goes to ground. So that is complete. All right, and on the, out, on the left side here, I have a five volt power supply. So this is the remote side, this is done. We're gonna put this aside. Okay, next is going to be our coordinator. Plug that in there, and then we need the XB, uh, the, then we get our Arduino, and connect this up. So 
So now the coordinator is complete. I'm going to connect this into the computer. And we're going to go over to uh, the computer and configure this Arduino. Now I'm going to actually be using the program that is listed right here. So if you need the code, it's going to be already here for you on the quick reference guide. I've loaded up the Arduino software and let's walk through the program I've made. So I've, I've got a variable temp and the setup, I'm just basically starting the serial. Loop is going to start similar to when we did the digital input. Make sure there's at least 21 bytes ready to be read. Make sure we start at the start byte and then for the next 19 bytes, we're just going to discard them all. I put them in this discard byte, but I'm not going to use it anywhere. Now we get down to the two analog bytes. It's actually two bytes, and one is the most significant byte, and one's the least significant byte. Let me show you what I mean there. Um, down on the bottom of my cheat sheet, there's an area that says digital sample data, and then after that is analog sample data, because there is no digital sample data in this, so there's, those bytes don't exist. So now we just go straight into analog sample data, and there will be two bytes for every pin set for the ADC. So in this case, we have one pin, which is pin 3. That's set to be ADC, so in that case, it's going to send us two bytes for the value. So there's one byte that's a high byte and one byte that's a low byte. I read them both in, and then I do a mathematical expression to get what that whole byte is. Basically, the most significant byte times 256 plus the least significant byte. So that gives us our analog reading. Now, I looked on the website for MCP9700 to learn how to get the values out of it in order to make sense of it. And basically, it needs to be read in like this, where we need to divide by 1023, um, and then do some more math, and then that should give us our temperature. So at this point we can print temp and then I'm just going to add degrees Celsius after that. So I've uploaded this sketch to the Arduino. Let's take a look at the monitor. There, it's, it's coming across. Excellent. So it's 76 degrees in my house right now. This I know from the temperature sensor that we put together. And I'm going to take I'm going to take the temperature sensor and breathe on it to make it warmer and we'll watch it go up. So after I breathed on it you see that it went up about 5 degrees. That's because the breath in my body is warmer than the, breath in the, the temperature in the room. So that's really cool. We're getting temperature data from a remote XP. I just love it. That's super cool. Well, that was pretty fast and easy. Now you know how to get analog data out of a remote XP. So because we ended a little early, I wanted to show you something I made. You can see it here above my door. So there's a little XP up there above my door and it's got one of those door sensors on it. So when the door is open, the two sensors come apart. And when the door is closed, the sensors go together. Okay, so I disconnected it from the wall so you could see. You're already familiar with this block because we covered about that. We covered that in the last lesson. Um, so that this XB kit is connected to the XB, like so. So you can see we have two wires that we've tapped in here, the red one that we which is D3, very similar to what we did today, and the yellow one, which is what we talked about in the last video, actually. So behind this kit here is another board I put together. And on the bottom of this board, you can see we've got a USB input. And this is nice because USB is 5 volts, so it just all works out really nice that way. Um, I bought this little red board on SparkFun. And then on the bottom side is just another little breakout board that I used to solder all my joints together. And then this, this little black thing here is the temperature sensor. So I'm getting actually door reading and whether door, door is open or closed and temperature reading all day long from my front door. Actually it looks like my yellow my yellow wire broke. I have to re-solder that back into the board. But you get the idea. It's really 
nice little system that fits together very well and compact and easy. So it all fits together really clean, uh, all in a nice little unit. Another, another tip I want to talk to you about is this, uh, this is the old USB cable and basically if you cut this end off it will have two wires in here, one for plus five volts and one for ground. So it's a really cool, easy to, um, easy to get five volt power supply. Okay, that's it for this lesson. You learned how to take analog readings from a remote XB. Um, we've come a long ways with XB. We've learned a lot. It's been really cool so far. We have one more lesson remaining and in that one, you're going to learn how to change the pin on a remote XB, high or low. Send digital output to it. So that's going to be really cool, and I'll see you next time.